Yesterday was the 20th anniversary of 9-1-1. Actually, I was not here in this country when the tragedy happened in September 11, 2001. Nevertheless, I cannot forget the most tragic scene I've ever seen. I invite you to join in silent prayer for a minute, thinking all the victims and all the people involved in the victims and all the people who have dedicated themselves to protect this country. Let us join in me in silent prayer for me. As you know, I'm a movie person. So this morning, I want to begin my sermon with movie story. The movie I want to say about is Korean movie titled Old Boy, which was re uh, remade in Hollywood, but not as successful as the original. This movie is kind of a scary movie, so I hope I'm not gonna scare you too much. In the last scene of this movie, the main character cuts off his own tongue begging forgiveness for all the wrong things he said with his tongue. In the film, one guy is imprisoned in a cell which resembles a hotel room for 15 years without knowing the identity of his captor or his captor's motives. In 1988, a businessman is arrested for drunkenness. After one of his friends picks him up from the police station, he is kidnapped and wakes up in a sealed hotel room where food is delivered through a trap door. Watching TV news, he learns his wife has been murdered and he is the prime suspect. He passes time planning revenge and attempting to dig a tunnel to escape. Fifteen years passes since he was imprisoned and he is finally released. He finds himself still trapped in a web of conspiracy and violence. He eventually recalls he and his captor had gone to the same high school and he had witnessed the captor's sister 
committing a strange act because of the curiosity of puberty. He told his friends what he had seen, which led to his classmates learning about it. Rumors spread, and the captor's sister killed herself because of the rumor. Leading a grief stricken captor to seek revenge. In the movie, the captor's cliche to the main character is You are too talkative. It must be a painful example of the power of tongue to inflict people's harm. In today's episode lesson, James includes the longest passage in the Bible about the role of speech in the life of a Christian. In several previous passages, James has stressed how important it is our words match our deeds. But in today's passage, he talks about the power of language and speech to give life. But he talks even more about their power to dominate and destroy. We all stumble in many ways, James says. Only the person who has tamed the tongue can claim Christian maturity. It is not easy. Humanity has tamed the world of nature, but no one can tame the tongue. Human speech seems innocent enough. After all, the tongue is such a small part of the body but its small size is in contradiction with its powerful influence. James compares it to a bee that controls a horse and or a rudder that steers an enormous ship. The tongue can burn like a raging forest fire, he says, sending the whole world up in smoke and go up in smoke with it. Smoke, smoke right from the pit of hell. It corrupts both the speaker and the listener. What we say to one another, James says, can be full of deadly poison that kills. What about our country's political speech? Recently, as for me, it would be hard to imagine anything more vapid or more disruptive to civic life. Some of our arguably greatest teachers, that they have been political leaders, have had razor-sharp tongue that they have used with ruthless skill. During the pandemic, the political leaders who have used their tongues only for the sake of their political position and not for the sake of people's safety are some of them. One great populist and some of his followers would say, the virus came from China, naming the virus Kung Fu virus. 
or a China virus. What has been happening as the result of their terms? As you know, lots of hate movements towards Asian Americans have been prevailing in this beautiful and blessed country. Furthermore, some of them would spread fake news with their tongues about wearing masks and vaccinations, which has led to an unimaginable number of dying and suffering due to the virus. Like James says in today's reading, by our speech, we can ruin the world, turn harmony to chaos, throw mud on our reputation, send the whole world up in smoke, and go up in smoke with it. Smoke white from the pit of hell. This country, in this 20, 21st century, in this scientific world, is in a great chaos and tragedy. We cannot find any similar precedent disaster in our history. More than 600,000 people have died just for a couple of years. And more than 100,000 people a day has joined in a new confirmed cases. How could we find out more vivid example, James says, through today's reading? This morning, James says to us, we can tame a tiger, but we cannot tame a tongue. It's never been done. The tongue runs wild or went on killer. With our tongues, we bless our God, our Father, with the same tongues, we curse the very men and women God made in God's image. Curses and blessings out of the same tongue. Let's pray. God of wisdom, we have gathered here to learn of your will for us. Sometimes we realize it is not easy for us to follow Jesus in our words and actions. We confess today how difficult it is to tame our tongues. We lay before you words that we wish we could choose carefully. Silence kept when we would when it would have been better to speak. All the inconsiderate talk behind backs. All the chatter that tears down one another. Every wound that words have inflicted. Guide us to use our words to build up the body of Christ and include more people into the love of God rather than to tear down or divide. 
help our words to lead us to maturity in faithfulness. Give us strength and courage to follow Jesus wholeheartedly in not only what we do and also what we say. In the one who reminds us that words have power. Amen.